Hello friends, welcome to my video module. This is Dr. Sanjeev Banerjee from Mechanical Engineering Department, Tejpur University. In this video module, we are going to discuss on an analysis of failure of an automobile rear axle. So here it follows. Before we start, we have to give a brief introduction on how the story begins which is related to the evolvement of the fracture mechanics subject. After the early 1940s and 50s what happened is that the designers were considering only the stress strain curves and they considered that if the stress level is lower than the yield strength or the ultimate tensile strength then the material is not supposed to fail. But what happened is that during the second world war some warships were exported to some colder countries. So those ships got fractured or failed at significantly lower amount of load or even if in absence of any load. We can see in this slide that those ships got fractured into two pieces even when the ships are standing in the dock. So designers were confused with this phenomena. What came into picture is the ductile to brittle transition temperature. The story goes like that. Those ships were manufactured in the comparatively hotter countries and they were working in the colder climatic conditions. Uh, under a certain level of temperature, even a comparatively ductile material will behave as a brittle material. And most of the joints of the ships were welded joints. And we know that one of the common defects of welding is crack. So the cracks generated from the welded joints propagated through the brittle materials of the ships and they got fractured. So the brittle mode of fracture came into the picture. Here it is interesting to note a few differences between the ductile and the brittle mode of fracture. In ductile mode of fracture, the fracture surface have a large amount of plastic deformation. So failure occurs after significant amount of plastic deformation which will be revealed as the fracture surface. But in brittle mode of fracture, the fracture or failure occurs without any significant amount of plastic deformation. Secondly, in ductile mode of fracture, the crack generally propagates very slowly because it propagates with considerable amount of plastic deformation. While in brittle mode of fracture, the crack propagates very fast. Once it generates, it cannot be controlled because it propagates without any considerable amount of plastic deformation. And last but not the least is that in the ductile mode of fracture, the crack propagation can be controlled by decreasing the amount of load while in brittle mode of fracture, the crack propagation once it is generated cannot be controlled by decrease or even if by release of the load. So this introduction is essential to understand the necessity of studying fracture surfaces, the different modes of fracture and especially the brittle mode of fracture came into picture. And generally to study the different modes of fracture, we test the fracture surfaces under scanning electron microscope to reveal the mode of fracture, whether it is in ductile mode or brittle mode or it is in the mixed mode. Coming to the particular case study, 
or this particular topic. This is an analysis of failure of an automobile rear axle. The story goes like this. After a light pickup truck left the road and it was overturned, uh, it was revealed that one of the rear axles had failed near the wheel mounting flange and adjacent to the bearing lock nut. So an entire investigation was carried out to know whether the accident caused the axle failure or the axle failure caused the accident. Now we can see the different parts of the failed axle. This is the failed axle and this is the wheel mounting flange. This is the part from where the axle had failed near the wheel mounting flange. Starting from the material of the failed axle, the axle has a carbon concentration of 0.3 weight percent. That means it is quite in the range of my steel and it is a ductile material. Coming to the fracture surface, when we just visualize in our naked eye, we can see in this slide that the periphery and uh, the perimeter region of the failed axle has a comparatively flat surface, while the center or the core region of the failed axle has a comparatively rough surface. Secondly, there are some patterns which are coming adjacent to the keyway, which gives us some idea of detection of crack propagation. So this is the fracture surface that we can visualize with our naked eye. Now in this slide, we will have an investigation of the fracture surface under scanning electron microscope. So when we are investigating the fracture surfaces of the periphery and the center region under scanning electron microscope or ACM, it is revealed that the periphery region, it has the materials piled one above the other, comparatively flatter surfaces and there are no signs of any plastic deformation. So it is a brittle or cleavage mode of fracture while in the center and core region we see some flat surfaces as well as there are a lot of dimples, cup like features of plastic deformation. So we can see over here that these are some cup like features of plastic deformation and there are a lot of signs of plastic deformation along with the flat surfaces. So it is a mixed mode of fracture. So we can conclude that the actual failed axle has a brittle and cleavage mode of fracture in the periphery region while the center or the core region has a mixed mode of fracture. We come to the further investigation taking the samples from the failed axle to get to know how the actual material should behave leaving aside the loading conditions. Here first of all we go for optical microscopy. We prepare the sample, we polish it and etch it and look under the optical microscope. We see that over here the periphery region of the shaft consists of the tempered martensite. Whereas the micro constituents of the center or the core region are mainly the ferrite, perlite and somewhat bainite. So this is the evidence number one of the material. Coming to the next slide, we go for transverse hardness measurement from surface of the shaft towards the center of the shaft. We clearly see that the hardness is more in the surface of the shaft 
nearly 56 HRC, which is abruptly decreasing towards the center of the shaft to 20 HRC. So that means the surface has a higher hardness compared to the center of the shaft. This is evidence number two. From these two evidences, that is from optical microscopy and the uh, transverse micro hardness measurements, we can conclude that the shaft material was induction hardened because during induction hardening, the surface of the shaft was hardened more because the hardness is more and the tempered martensite is the microstructure while the center or the core region was not hardened that much that is why the microstructure remained as the ferrite and pearlite and the hardness was low. So the shaft material was induction hardened. Up to this we have got some idea about how the material should have behaved without considering the different loading conditions. So up to this time it is not confirmed that which theory is true that means whether the accident caused the failed axle or whether the failed axle caused the accident because in the periphery region we see that the fractured mode it is a brittle or cleavage mode of fracture for overloading but the center or the core region is a mixed mode of fracture and it is neither supporting any of the theories. At this point of time it was hypothesized that the center or the core region was strain rate sensitive which means is that if the loading is gradual under the slow strain rate then the fracture behavior should have been much more ductile because over here the material was comparatively more ductile but if the loading is of impact type that is of higher strain rate just like truck rollover then the fracture behavior over here should have been much more brittle or cleavage type. So since the theory at this point of time uh, cannot be concluded or confirmed uh, to collect more evidence on the loading conditions. So we are planning for both the tensile testing that is at slower strain rate and the impact testing that is at the higher strain rate. Firstly, we are going for the Charpy impact test. So we are doing the test with V notch specimens. Firstly, we should see that the energy absorbed in the periphery region is quite low approximately 4 joule which is very low compared to 11 joule in the center or core region of the shaft which means the periphery region of the shaft is much more brittle compared to the center region. Secondly, while visualizing the fracture surface in this slide we can see that the periphery region has comparatively a flat surface that means the mode of fracture was a brittle or cleavage mode of fracture while in the center or core region we can see that there are some rough surfaces and there are signs of plastic deformation that means the fracture was much more ductile. To confirm this one we come to the scanning electron microscopy of this same fractured surfaces of the impact specimens. Again we see that in the first picture that is the sample from the periphery region. So here the comparatively flat surfaces are there. There are no signs of any dimples or plastic deformations that means the fracture mode here it is a brittle or cleavage mode of fracture. Whereas in the second one this is from the center or the core region. So here, so there are some although flat surfaces, but the surfaces are full of dimples. There are cup like features of plastic deformations. The surface is rough enough which reveals 
a great deal of plastic deformation. So it is a mixed mode of failure. So this fracture surface from the impact specimen is very much similar to the actual fractured surface of the failed axle. Now to confirm that we go for a tensile test sample. Tensile test means of the slower strain rate. Here we see the fracture surface of the center and the core region of the shaft. We see that it is very much ductile because the surface is full of dimples and there are lots of cup like features of plastic deformation and the surface has no significant amount of flat surfaces. So it is comparatively a ductile mode of fracture when it was tensile tested that means under a slower strain rate. So coming to the conclusion we can see that in the periphery region the material was approximately itself more brittle. So there was a brittle mode of fracture and in the center or the core region it was strain rate sensitive. That means is that that if the loading is gradual of lower strain rate or a slower strain rate. So then the fracture surface should have been somewhat more ductile as in the case of tensile tested samples. But if the loading is of impact type that is of higher strain rate or if the reason is that is a single high strain rate incident as in the case of truck rollover then the fracture surface should have been much more uh, brittle or cleavage mode of fracture as in the case of impact tested samples and that is the actual fracture surface. So since the actual fracture surface resembled with the fracture surface of the impact tested samples. So we can very clearly conclude that the reason was not the gradual loading but it was due to an impact loading or a single high strain rate incident that is a truck rollover. So we can conclude over here that the truck rollover is a reason for the axle failure and not that the axle failure had caused the accident. So the accident had caused the axle failure. Now we may also explore somewhat the other possibility that is the axle failure caused the accident. So in that case the loading should be gradual as in the case of tensile testing that is of slower strain rate and there will be crack propagation of course slow crack propagation and up to uh, the crack achieves a critical length that means the remaining part of the axle will be unable to bear the amount of load. So in that case the fracture should have been a ductile mode of fracture as in the case of tensile tested samples. But the actual fracture surface is not looking as a ductile mode of fracture. It is a much more brittle mode of fracture that is it is in a mixed mode of fracture. So this theory cannot be supported that that the axle failure had caused the accident. So we can confirm now that actually the accident caused the axle failure because the loading was of impact type and the high strain rate incident was there. So due to the high strain rate incident the fracture surface was very much brittle and cleavage mode of fracture as we can see it resembles just like the impact tested samples. So here we go. I think it has given a clear overview on the different modes of fracture and how we can test the fracture surface to get to know the type of fracture. So thank you for listening and uh, we will see you again for the next video module.